Welcome to the WRAL Daily Download. I'm your host, Amanda Lamb. In today's conversation with Mark Siegendaler, we have a real treat for you. We are talking about something everyone seems to be talking about right now. It's one of the hottest movies in the country, Oppenheimer. It documents the true story of the scientist who headed the team that created the atomic bomb. Now, one of the scientists who worked on that team in New Mexico was Dr. Louis Siegendaler. He was a physicist from North Carolina State University, among other places. And he was there in the desert in July of 1945 when that first atomic bomb was detonated as a test on U.S. soil. In today's episode, Siegendaler's son, Mark, is here to share his father's incredible story with us. So, Mark, welcome to the program. Okay. Uh, you know, Hi, everybody. you um, and I both saw the movie yesterday on the same day, which is really funny, not at the same time or the same location. And I was just fascinated by it. Um, I I don't think I knew. Well, I certainly didn't know about all the politics and the controversy surrounding this this oh. scientific project. So, I mean, it's really long. It's it's three hours. What what did you think of the movie? What were your first impressions? Uh, I, I, it's, I Google News has been feeding me two or three articles a day based on the movie coming out. So I. I'm I'm learning a lot more things about what happened to Dr. Oppenheimer and some of the other people. And I, I've even learned some things about my father because I was a kid coming up in Kansas and there's just odd things around the house that he revered. And I heard some stories about him from Los Alamos. And as I went into college, uh, I started picking, you know, I, I watched some of his videos. Um, if, you, if you Google Siegenthaler, there's one out there for the Society of Physics Students, which is his recollection of what happened at that point. And he's much more humorous than I am. <laughs> well, it's so it's so interesting. I mean, he was a physicist at many places, including NC State. Um And he was recruited in 1941 to go to New Mexico, Los Alamos, to work on what was known at the time, I guess, as this top secret Manhattan project with world renowned scientists, one of them being Robert Oppenheimer, who was kind of the head of it. And this was before you were born. But so everything that you've learned about this was, I would imagine, from him retelling you these stories over the years. So what, what did he say about how he got involved? Okay. First, first of all, it's I believe it's Robert Oppenheimer. Correct me if I'm saying. <laughs> never mind. Um, and I think that my folks first got the the call. I think they got the call in 1943. And okay. Okay. At, at that point, um, they were Los Alamos was crazy trying to build stuff I, i've got four or five books over here 109 palace uh oppenheimer and lawrence the yeah, other books that i picked up over the years about what happened in los alamos and at that point uh the ho- they were throwing houses together at almost cardboard shacks some of them didn't have kitchens um I mean, they literally, they literally built this town. And, and of course, I learned this from the movie. They literally built this yeah. town, right? So the scientists and their families could go and live there to this very remote desert. Um, they brought thousands of people uh-huh. there. Uh, the numbers I heard was 7,000 people. I, I'm, I'm sure they weren't all scientists and engineers and everybody else. Um one of my father's friends, uh, if you're familiar with pottery, his mother was uh, Maria Martinez, and she did the, the black pots um, and uh, San Ildefonso Pueblo. And her son was Popo Vidal, and he worked as a machinist in one of the labs. And it, evidently, at one point, he got annoyed at what somebody did or said and said, I quit. And the next day he got drafted and sent back to work. So, yeah, so you didn't 
it was it was a place with a lot of secrecy shrouding it, I would imagine. Oh, um, yeah. Well, we're going to talk more after the break. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. So, Mark, on this day that the test was done, which is July 16th, 1945, these scientists, mm-hmm. they had been working on this for years, and they got to watch this detonation of the nuclear weapon by the U.S. on U.S. soil from, I understand, about 10 miles away. And it was known as the Trinity Test. And they held up this special glass to protect their eyes. I'm sure this was just a fascinating story to you uh, as a young man. What did your father tell you about what he saw and experienced on that day? Well, the... Uh... The video that they shot, uh, what they clipped at, at one point, I show, you know, they bring me back in and I'm, I'm looking up at the ceiling and, it, and it, they cut out the, the first part. And you'll see it in the movie. They've got a piece of uh, glass, probably four, four inches by four inches. And Dad said it was uh, out of welders, a welder's goggles or mask or whatever. They said, and, and the noonday sun, you could look up at the sun with that and go, I think I see the sun there. So it's protecting Anyhow, your eyes, said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he said he was facing the other direction went off and holding the glass up to his face, and he thought he saw the bones in his hands. Wow. So this was really dramatic. I'm sure it was something that he never, ever forgot. Right, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I know, you know, obviously— this was a scientific breakthrough that changed the world in many ways. I mean, that that bomb, that was the prototype for the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which effectively ended World War II. Do you remember what your father's takeaway was about this? Did he ever talk about, you know, kind of the result of this scientific experiment? Because obviously scientists don't always get to see um, you know, major world change based on what they've done. I, I, I don't think we ever talked about it. I know he never felt any guilt about it. And I, I've, I've thought about it myself and went, okay, they started it. Uh, and there was a, a plan that they had called Operation Downfall that it, if, we had to invade. That was the invasion plan. And if you look up uh, the estimates of what Operation Downfall would have cost in human lives, it would have been several hundred thousand uh, of our military. You felt like that this um, saved lives in terms of ending the war and sparing the lives that would have been lost if the war had continued. Millions of lives. So tell me, tell me about how you, you know, how you process this as your legacy, your family's legacy, your family's story. I mean, I'm sure you're you're proud of your father's accomplishments. Yeah. Well. Well, you know, because of the movie coming out. Um, Kind of out I've there for to, everyone to, to see, to, right? I had to come out publicly about it. So, um, like you, I said, I I have no no guilt about what they did. Was it uh, exciting it was to see the movie? To see you know part of your father's story brought to life in film? Yeah, yeah. He was working at, with the critical mass for plutonium. And he said at one point he had he was working he had mechanical hands behind leaded glass and he had the two pieces of plutonium behind about the size of a softball totally and the two separate pieces you didn't want to put them together at that point uh, critical mass and all that and there was a, a guard standing by that had this thirty eight revolver in his hand that said. Dad joked that the man just couldn't afford a, hol- uh, a holster, but no, that was his responsibility was to guard that plutonium. And he said the other 2% was on its way from Hanford. So it was all that we had. And he you had don't want to lose it, right? 
Yeah, and he dropped one of those pieces. And he says, it's heavier than lead and softer. So it did it. And he told the guy with the pistol, says, stay here and watch that. And the guy says, you don't have to tell me that, sir. And so we went off and got a ball peen hammer and slid it back on the, the through the window there and, and picked up the plutonium and beat, beat, it, beat, it, beat it back in shape. And the next morning he got called into Oppenheimer's office and he said they were they were doing equations to figure out critical mass and uh, Oppenheimer says, is everything okay? And Dad said, yes, sir. And went, that's all I need to know and went back to work. That's, a, that's great. What a great story. Well, Mark, thank you so much for sharing your family's fascinating story and giving us more insight into this really interesting time in history. And thanks for listening to the WRAL Daily Download. If you'd like to hear more about things to do, places to visit, and restaurants to enjoy in North Carolina, check out WRAL Out and About, a weekly podcast from WRAL News. Find WRAL Out and About in your podcast app.